Hello guys, I'm back. Just thought I'd drop in on you guys today because I was thinking of an idea for my next video how I wanted to do it. So I said, I think it'd be best if I just turn on the camera and just give it to you. Because I had said that one of my things I was going to do was just give it to you raw. So, today the topic is five things or five mistakes that new drivers make at a constantly rate. So, when you think about that, you say to yourself, uh, what could the mistakes be? They could vary from anything from turning and properly turning around a corner with your truck and with your trailer to coupling to understanding your bill of lading and what it's saying to probably understanding the information, your low information when your dispatcher dispatches out to you. So, since I gave you a couple of them, let's go into detail with them. We'll start with your bill of lading. Uh, drivers, new drivers, one of the more common things that new drivers do is actually go to the wrong facility. The reason why they go to the wrong facility could be a reason, a, a topic, a, a different topic of things. One could be maybe they didn't understand what the dispatcher was saying. Uh, maybe because maybe they get a dispatch through the phone. Maybe the dispatch just call them, tell them the information, and they go from there. Normally, they have them with a lot of mom and pops, little small companies. With your big major companies, they'll know I'll have a Qualcomm that dispatch your information to you over the Qualcomm. You may have a phone call with your dispatcher, but most of our information is, all the information is going to be dispatched to you in the Qualcomm. When you go in that Qualcomm and you get that information, you want to thoroughly read what the dispatch information is saying. From your pickup time to your uh, pickup location to your destination, your destination time. Uh, if you have a window, like sometimes um, a lot of loads may say that you're supposed to be there at 12 o'clock. But sometimes, well, a good bit of time, it's like a two-hour window, meaning you can arrive there, like, for example, like at Walmart. Walmart gives you their two-hour, unless it doesn't change. The last time I was there, it was such as I'm about to state. In a two-hour window, they gave you an hour before your appointment time to arrive, and they give you an hour after your appointment time if you miss your appointment time. So your appointment time was at 12 o'clock, for example. You could arrive at 11 o'clock. That's an hour before. If your appointment still is at 12 o'clock, you could have arrived at 1 o'clock. That's an hour after. And that was how they worked their two-hour window. So we're working a two-hour one like that. It kind of gives you a little leeway, in a sense, that if you 30 minutes late, 20 minutes late, but you within that two-hour window, you good. You good. Because going to Walmart, you're never going to just come in and out there anyway. Never. Some drivers do. And that's because they have maybe like some, they come have like some special arrangement with Walmart. So therefore, a lot of times they will wind up dropping trailers. Or maybe putting a trailer in a dock, but then going to go pick up a loader trailer that's already slotted in a lot somewhere on that yard. The next thing. Oh, sorry. So I, before I say that. So if you, one of the main things in, in trucking is always ask questions. If you don't know, ask questions. That is why your dispatcher is there, to answer your questions. So if you get low information and you're like, hmm, I thought they might have said, London, Kentucky, but this thing says Loudoun, Tennessee. Kind of similar. The name's kind of similar. Both of those cities are in the same south, is in the southeast region. So, if you still confused after looking at your Qualcomm, if you work with one of the major carriers, just call your dispatcher. Call your dispatcher and just say, hey, I, I, I'm not understanding what I'm supposed to be doing here. Can we go over this inf information again? Because I think I'm reading something different on the Qualcomm other than what we other than what we talked about. If it's a small mom and pop carrier, which for the most part, if you're a new driver, you're not hardly gonna start out with a mom and pop carrier. The reason why is because you don't have any experience. So one of the another reason with that goes along with that is most mega carriers they get better insurance rates as opposed to the mom and pops. The mom and pops is not doesn't have that many trucks um uh insured. They don't have that many trailers insured. They don't have that much. They have maybe a high prop uh gross margin and prop profit margin, but it's not high such as like Jake and Jill trucking compared to Swift, Swift Transport or Warner Transport. They are just major 
uh, trucking companies. They have over 20,000 trucks, over 20,000 trailers. I think Swift got like, if I'm not, if I'm not wrong, I think Swift has somewhere like 200,000 trucks, and like 500,000 trailers. I mean, they're, they're a large company. So, of course, you got that many trucks and trailers, you pretty much going to get a cheaper insurance rate. Okay, moving on. Second thing, coupling and uncoupling. With the coupling, I have noticed that one of, well, I ain't going to say I have noticed. Well, I will say I have noticed that a lot of new drivers, they have a tendency just to get lined up or get as straight as they can to their trailer and they just put that bad boy in gear and they just go back. You will mess up your kingpin doing that. You will mess that up. You will mess up your plate doing that. You will mess up the job. Those, if you look inside there, there's are like some interchanging little locks that locks around the shank of your trailer. So if you keep hitting those things, hitting them, what will happen is eventually you will knock them out. You will knock them out of whack where they won't lock. So what happens is when they won't lock is that you have to go get that repair. And a lot of times just a simple repair really don't fix it because the problem will still always come back. It'll, it'll, it'll always arise. So one way of doing so one way of coupling up to a trailer is just slow down. Slow down. And I know if you got if the trailer is really low, you're gonna have to kind of give a little gas to get up under there. But once you get that plate on your trailer, up on that lip of that trailer, and it starts sliding up, just ease on back. Because you're there now. Just ease on back. If not, if you ram it, you you're gonna cause some damage. You're gonna cause you may not it may not happen the first time, may not happen the tenth time. But eventually if you keep doing that, you're gonna cause some damage. So slow down. The next part of coupling and uncoupling is this. A lot of drivers forget, especially when you're new, because there's three stages. You got your hoses, your air hoses, your electrical your electrical pigtail. You got your um your um your handle that you're gonna pull to release the trailer from the plate of the truck. And you got your landing gear. I have seen drivers, for some reason, they skip over the hoses and the pigtail, go straight to pull, to pull their lat, they hit they um the uh plate latch when they pull that bad boy they don't think about nothing else they walk right back to the truck and when they walk back to the truck and this is again a moment that you should slow down because if you slow down what will happen is <clears throat> if you don't have that landing gear set and you still got them hoses still attached what will happen is that truck is only gonna be able to go so far before you hear that trailer fall down on the body of the truck when you hear that trailer fall down the body of the truck, you should stop. Because if you go any further, what's going to happen is, if you are lucky, your hoses and your pigtail and your air hoses are going to tear away, but they're not going to tear up. Most of the time, if they tear away, they're going to break. They're going to snap. The line's going to snap. Now, the pigtail itself may come out because the pigtail has a little, where the, pig, where the pigtail connects in to the truck and where it connects to the, to the trailer, it it connects um it's some holes holes inside there. So inside that pigtail some holes and on top of it is like a little like a little lip. So the little lap over the trailer and on the truck is a little lap that's that sits behind this little flap that's on the pigtail. And that's kind of like a little stoppage thing to keep it from just popping out. But that would not stop it from popping out compared to you pressing the accelerator. Excuse me. Sorry about that, y'all. And the truck is pulling away. So you want to make sure you have all those things completely unplugged and wind down. And what I mean by that is develop your routine. If you know you're dropping the hook, when you got the truck, first stop should be right behind your trailer. Pull your hoses. Put them in the little in the holder. Next thing, pull your latch to your trailer. Third thing, wind down your landing gear. Fourth thing, come back in the truck, drop your air suspension. If you drop your air suspension, that would negate how hard your truck pulls away from the trailer. So just drop your air suspension, and and if if need be, just let it all drain out. I mean, it's not. It's only gonna take a second for the build back up because as you are pulling away and you pop your latch back down on your air suspension. 
it automatically starts building right back unless you have a leak somewhere. And if you have a leak, you're going to hear that air because it's going to just spew out. You'll hear it. But if you don't have a leak, just pop the latch. And when you pop that latch, by the time you go, I don't know, 10 feet, the air is pretty much built back up. I mean, it's, I mean, whatever level it's supposed to be, it's pretty much there. Okay. So we don't cover reading and build lady. We don't cover coupling. Also, another thing that new drivers do a lot <clears throat> is making turns. It's a big difference between turning this truck and trailer as opposed to turning your car. Even if you got a pickup trailer and you um, say you got a side hustle that you um, cut grass on the side. So you operate a little trailer there by pulling that, you know, by putting your equipment on a trailer. That little trailer does not compare to <laughs> a big rig trailer. It do not compare. They do not turn the same. They do not, um, the wheels are not rolling at the same velocity and speed. It's totally different. So, one of the main things with turning for new drivers is to remember, always take as much space as you need, especially when making a right-hand turn. The reason why I say we're especially making a right-hand turn is because with right-hand turns, you lose. As you make the turn, you will lose a whole part of your vision where you can't see nothing out your mirror. Another thing, most time you make a right-hand turn, there's a, it's a traffic light sometimes, depending if you're in the city, because they'll sit the traffic light right down the corner. There's a track. There could be a traffic light. There could be a light pole. There could be a telephone pole. Some type of communication line pole. However, it could be um, what else could there be? Uh, there could be a fire hydrant on the corner. All these things are major when you're making a right hand turn because again, when you're making that turn, you're gonna totally miss a whole side of the truck, truck and the trailer. For a couple seconds, you won't see nothing at all. So you need to know that you are wide enough to make this turn. And once you start, once you start coming out of that turn, that that trailer is going to snap back behind that truck and you're going to be in line going forward. If not, what will happen is the truck will be turning and the trailer will just be dragging. And if your trailer is dragging, that means you're too, you're very long. And so upon being very long, what's happening is the, the wheels are not, the wheels are not moving with the truck and then turning. The truck is moving and the wheel is still staying stationary and they're just pivoting as the truck turns. But so you need the wheels to turn to go for, to move and pivot with the truck. That's what you need to do and that's what you need to have in order to keep from hitting anything. Your easy turns are always your left hand turns. The reason why they're your left hand turn is because you're turning, you sit on the left side of the truck, you're turning left so you can see everything to, to your left. But Sometimes, sometimes, very rare, but sometimes you can't sit on your left. And when, when that happens, is it's normally when you're doing like a blindside bag. It's normally when that happens. And hopefully if you ever have to do a blindside bag, you have plenty of room in which that you can manipulate the turn. Meaning that if you're not that good at bagging up, you manipulate the turn by starting out too wide. So that way, when you catch somewhat of an angle, you can see where the trailer's at. So when you see where the trailer's at, now you know how to begin your the start of your next turn, where you need to be turning to the left or where you need to be turning to the right. That is very major when doing uh, blindside bagging. Because when you blindside bagging, it's literally as its name suggests. It's blindly. Blindly. The, really, the only mirror that'll help you while you blindside bagging is this mirror. Right there to the right, the mirror, the nose of the trailer, that mirror right there. Or depending on which side, cause if you to your left, that is the only mirror that's really giving you any adequate sight or distance after you first start rolling. Because in, within the first three to five feet of rolling and you turning, you gonna your visibility is all of a sudden being eclipsed. Now, part is that part of that is the part of the reason why. Um, the turning ratio is like that is because in an attempt to make trucks more fuel dynamic and more aerodynamic and to cut through the air, they have shortened the wheelbases on a lot of these trucks. So with a shorter wheelbase, that leaves you less clearance from your trailer to the body of your truck to make turns before they start imploding upon each other. 
When they implode upon each other, that's when you see trucks with the side fairing damage. That's when you see trucks like at the back part of the bunk, they'll be all bent in. I hate it for those drivers when they have it when they have that because none the structure, the 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 the, the cab structure is, has been compromised. And they can have a crack in there somewhere, they can start leaking in there. And um, with all the different weathers that we go through, whether it's rain, sleet, hail, snow, whatever, you could build up a uh, mildew in those uh, in the in the sleeper back there. So always give yourself enough room. If you need to take up two lanes to make a right turn, and you downtown Chicago, take up those two lanes, okay? Because it's gonna always it put it this way: it's always better to lose time making a turn. Then to lose time because you don't hit something or you don't hit someone or you don't pull down a, a power line or you don't then make your turn look because in cities I'm gonna tell y'all something else in certain cities <clears throat> they had these overpasses and a lot of times they had these overpasses equipped and they don't sometimes they'll say adjust for like snow sometimes but a lot of the bridges have been done with because I've been driving a while. A lot of times they haven't been outdated now. But the over the the overpasses be low. So sometimes you make like for example, like in Chicago, certain areas in Chicago, you they're high enough if you're going through the middle. But when you making that first initial turn, you have to be wide. You have to be wide enough that when you make that turn, you start straightening up and you going center through that through that tunnel or up on the underpass, so to speak, that your trailer is not dragging and catches the edge. Because your trailer, your trailer could miss the corner. But that overpass, it could your it could catch the corner, it could catch the top, the bottom corner of that overpass. Because you have to remember, your trailer is 13-6. 13-6. If you want to, if you want to, if you want to put in your mind hypothetically that your trailer is 13-8, that's a good rule to go by. Always, another good call, another good rule for thumb and trucking is, always assume more than what it is. And just like if you get a load and that load says that it's 42,000 pounds even, assume that it's 40, 43.5. Because you have to compensate for the fact that you're going to get some fuel. You have to compensate for the fact that you got things in your truck. You have to compensate for the fact of that load itself and the palace that is on. And with that being said, some of these people aren't too good with math. So you want to always try to overcompensate for the weight and thinking where well, you're going to slide your terminals. Because sliding terminals is going to make a difference in how, to, how your fuel economy. Sliding terminals is going to make a difference in how to low ride where you're going to be bouncing up and down or your back going to be hurting. It's like you're just pulling dead weight the whole trip. Well, it is dead weight, but with the air suspension trailer, you're supposed you 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 you're not supposed to feel that force on your body as much, and even when you hit a bump, it's supposed to level out the bumpiness of it. So, making your turns is very important. And a phrase that they call that is trucking is your swing swing dip turning. Okay, this how it is. Your swing is to turn. The dip is the way in which that your trailer is going to rock or move to one side or the other in which that you're turning. So the weight is going to overcompensate to one side. That's the dip. And then you have, of course, the turn. I mean, the, the in which that you actually is lining yourself up to get into a spot. No, let me say that over. The swing is actually your momentum before you start when, in your start in order, and then in, in order to get position your dip is the weight in which that your trailer is going to in which that your weight is the trailer the weight the weight is going to level your trailer off that they're going to rock to the left or to the right and then your turn is how you're going to actually get your angle to bag up into where you're going or turn yourself out of a situation and get straightened up the next thing would be mm, how can i say this I know we all are different. I know we all want to have our own little sense of pride and take pride in what we do. But know when, know when enough is enough. Know when to shut that truck down. And so what I mean by that is, do not drive 
tired. Don't do it. You're going to be put in some positions, especially as a rookie. You're going to be put in positions in which that you're going to say, okay, okay, okay. But then if you stop for a second, and this goes into planning your load. This goes into knowing how many miles you can cover in an hour. This goes into knowing when to take your breaks and when not to take your break, which is called trip planning. That's what all this is. All this is trip planning. So all these things goes into this, goes into the fact of whether or not you are driving tired, whether or not you have hours to drive somewhere, whether or not you have properly planned your trip in which that you're going to get enough rest. Another thing, you're never going to get adequate rest. You hear me? You're never going to get adequate rest. And what I mean by that is that your 10-hour break may be 10 hours, but you're not going to fully rest for 10 hours. And what I mean by that is that you're going to have to shower, you're going to have to eat, and then you have to get comp- get settled in the truck. All those things combined could go anywhere from 2 to 3 hours. So you got anywhere from 7 to 9 hours left. Before you have to be back up at it. I didn't think about this. In that 10 hour break. You still got to get back up. Get your hygiene done. You know get yourself ready. To start your day. So you're never going to get a full. You're never going to get accurate rest. But you can get decent rest. And if you plan your trip correctly. You can you can get it pretty. You, you can get pretty decent rest. And I say that because I'm a person, like, currently right now, I drive 700 miles a day. And somebody's going to see this video and say, there's no way he can drive 700 miles in a day. But if you had to plan your trip, you know when and how to make your stops. You know when and how traffic moves, which goes into planning your trip. What time you should leave, what time you should not leave. You can do 700 miles in a day. Okay. You can simply do 700 miles in a day just by this. Simple calculations. If your truck does a minimum of 65 miles an hour, calculate doing driving 10 hours in a day at 600 miles. If you drive 600 miles in a day, if you drive 10 hours at 60 miles an hour, that's 600 miles, right? That's how many miles that is. Okay. You are... You are given 11 hours of drive. Okay? Now, with that being said, if you're not stopping and starting 24-7, and depending on what time you start your trip, that's a possibility. You could drive the first 300 miles of your trip in like five hours. I promise you that. And in my video play, I have a video showing that how many miles that I do. I run the same load every day. Every now and then there's a change, but for the most part, I run the same load every day. So that's how that goes. So I'm going to cut this video off. I just want to jump in and let you guys give y'all those five things. Coupling, driving tired, properly reading your bill. Some people call it a manifesto. Some people call it bill of laden. Some people call it load information. Either way it goes, it's the same thing. Properly reading that information. To know where you're going, to know what you're supposed to be doing so you can plan your trip is very key. Very, very key. Last thing is turning. Always take as much space as needed to make your turns. You don't never want to make turns short. Because if you make turns short, you're going to damage something. Or you're going to hurt something. Or you're going to roll over something. Or you're going to pull something down. And that is not how you want to start your trucking career because those are fireable offenses. That is what those are. Those are fireball offenses. You are causing damage. And upon causing damage, company, truck companies don't want to deal with that. They don't want to pay you, pay for the truck, pay for the trailer, pay for the fuel insurance. I mean, pay for the insurance, pay for the fuel, book the loads, and then you tear up something. Because on that same day, you could have a load that probably only paying that. The, the company itself was probably only making $500. On that same run, you probably only making eighty dollars, but yet you caused ten thousand dollars worth of damage. At that point, you a liability. You're not needed no more. <laughs> I hate to say it that way, you're not needed no more. Oh, 
Guys, I didn't do it. I need you guys to stop what you're doing right now. Like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for all upcoming videos. And just know that we are the old gang because we are outstanding, baby. Only way we're going is to the top. We love each other, respect each other, and we love those that love us, respect us. If you can't do that and can't show that, then holla. <laughs> hey, I love y'all. Be safe. Any questions, any comments, leave a com leave it in the leave in the comment box. I will make sure I get back with you guys. Hey, keep doing what's turning, make your money, be safe. I'm out here. Oh squad!